Four months after it stops advertising, a manufacturing company notices that its sales have dropped from 100,000 units per month to 80,000 units per month. The sales follow an exponential pattern of decline. What will the sales be after another two months? So we drop from 100,000 to 80,000. So 100,000 is our initial. That's what we started with. That's the T of uh, zero. Um, the 80,000 is four months after it stopped advertising, so that's T equals four. So that means we've got Y equals our initial value was 100,000. E to the K times T. So we need to plug in our value at four. and solve for our proportionality constant. So we divide both sides by 100,000. If you did not know this, you can cancel zeros like this. So 80,000 over 100,000 is 8 over 10, which is 4 over 5. That may come in handy on the calculator in active section, possibly. Okay, so 4 fifths equals e to the 4k. So the natural log of 4 over 5 is equal to 4 over k. Divide both sides by 4. That's our k. So in another two months, what is our t value? t is 6. We don't plug 2 into the equation. We plug in 6. natural log of 4 over 5 divided by 4 times 6. Notice that's a negative number, that natural log of 4 over 5 divided by 4. We said when k was less than 0, it was decay or a decline. Um, all right, so e raised to that number times 100,000, too many zeros. There we go. So it declines to 71,554, and we're talking about units, so we'll just round it off to the nearest whole number. Do you always round it down? If you're talking about real things, you always round down. If you're talking about real people or products or something like that, round down. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just stopped. I just didn't even worry about the decimal at all. Okay. All right. Last one. Newton's law of cooling. Do y'all remember these problems from pre-calc at all? Maybe a little bit. Okay. Um, so, let Y represent the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit of an object in a room whose temperature is kept at a constant 60 degrees Fahrenheit. The object cools from 100 degrees to 90 degrees in 10 minutes. How much longer will it take for the temperature of the object to decrease to 80 degrees Fahrenheit? Now, this is an exponential problem, but it looks a little bit different because in this case, the rate of change of y is proportional to the difference between y and 60. It's not just proportional to y, it's proportional to the difference. So we're, we're going to take a step back and we're actually going to have to solve a differential equation to start with. Then we can delve into our problem. So this is where that big long formula, if you remember that, this big long formula is uh, where it comes from. All right, so... Uh, let's see here, we need the y on the left side, we need everything else on the other side, so that would be 1 over y minus 60 dy is equal to k dt. Set up exactly the same way, okay, just a little bit different, because then we're going to integrate. 
the integral is still the natural log, it's just not the natural log of y, but it's the natural log of y minus 60. The right side is still kt plus c. We're still going to write it in exponential form. And we can drop the absolute value bars again because our temperature is always going to be above that 60 degrees. Okay, our, what are, what are we even talking about? Just an object. It's just an object. You can tell us what it is. Just an object. That object is not going to be able to drop below the temperature in the room. Okay, it's just not going to work that way. Um, so we're going to do the same thing that we did before. We're going to rewrite the e to the kt plus c as c e to the kt. And then we're going to add the 60 from the other side to get uh, our equation solved for y. And y represents the temperature. Okay, so the specifics. The object started at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so when T is zero, the temperature is 100. So we subtract 60 from both sides. Um, K times zero is zero, E to the zero is one, so we really don't need that there. 100 minus 60 is 40. 40 is our C this time. How weird, but it is. Um, if you remember the formula that you were given in front of the E to the whatever, it was always the original temperature minus the temperature of the medium, if this problem is coming back to you at all. So original temperature minus the temperature of the medium. 100 minus 60 is 40, okay? So we've got that part of it. Uh, we need to find our K. So we've got 40E to the KT plus 60 is equal to Y. So we use the other piece of information. The object cools from, uh, it, it's 90 degrees Fahrenheit after 10 minutes. So 40E to the K times 10 plus 60 is equal to 90. Solve for k. Subtract 60 from both sides. Divide by 40. Take the natural log. And divide by 10. There is our k value. I'm going to type it in. And I'm going to store it as x. So it's approximately negative 0 0.028. It is cooling. This is decay, so it makes sense that k is negative. So now we have our equation. That gives us our temperature of the object after a certain amount of time. Now, this is a whole lot more simplified than the formula that we used in pre-calc, um, but it's because we found all the specifics to this problem. Uh, we found the number in front of the E. Before, it was the original temperature minus the temperature of the medium. Um, we found the um, K, which we still had to do. We had to do that. Um, in pre-calc, we had to find the specific K for each scenario, and then the plus 60 is the temperature of the medium. Okay, so it's still the same formula, we're just looking at it from a different perspective. How much longer will it take for the temperature to decrease to 80 degrees Fahrenheit? So, last step to solve here, to answer the actual question, we set our equation equal to 80, and we're looking for how long that takes. Subtract 60, then divide by 40. I hope y'all are okay with me doing that one step. So that's 20 divided by 40, that's 1 half. Now the natural log of 1 half is equal to 
our k times t. We need the actual answer, natural log of 1 half divided by x. 24.094 is t. Be careful with the phrasing of the question. The question said, how much longer will it take for the temperature to decrease? So that's the time that it happens. Ten minutes have already passed. So the actual answer is 14.094 minutes longer. Every once in a while, they'll do stuff like that. They'll throw those, um, and I can now guarantee if this was a multiple choice question, 24.094 would be uh, one of the answer choices. Is that mean? Yes, but for making sure you can pay attention to details. Why did I subtract it? Because it said how much longer will it take for the temperature to decrease to 80? This T right here is the time at which that will occur. That's 24 minutes since we started. But 10 minutes have already elapsed because it cooled from 100 to 90 in 10 minutes. And then we want to know how, many, how much longer will it take for it to go 10 more degrees. Okay. So notice it's not exactly proportional. It took 10 minutes for the first 10 degree drop, but it takes 14 minutes for the next 10 degree drop. Kind of makes sense if you think about um, a glass of ice water sitting on your desk or, or something like that when it's just sitting out. Um, it seems to melt a little bit faster to begin with, and then you know as it's reaching that equilibrium, that slows down as it's getting closer and closer to the temperature of the room. Okay. 